So our movie is uh, showing at the Free Minds Film Festival in Colorado a week from today on Saturday, yesterday on Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stoked. Are we going to have anybody we know there checking it out? I don't think so. It's at the University us, you know? of Colorado at Colorado Springs. I'll have a blog post tomorrow up about it, and I'm sending him ten copies or eight, two for him, and then eight copies of the gun training DVD to give away as prizes. I didn't have any more guns and weed, uh, but I had some okay. my okay. my new film. So he's going to give them away. And I was thinking like, hmm, gun films in Colorado too soon. <laughs> no, I don't think it's too soon. Do you think it's too soon? <laughs> no, I, I, I think, think it so. might cause some controversy, though. I told him to advertise the hell out of both facts. It's good. Yeah. I mean, that'll hopefully it'll bring people in. Yeah. I mean, that's what we need, right? We don't need to tuck our tail behind our legs or between our legs. Yep. Let's just get out there and talk more about the truth. So Ben Ben from the, the Ben Fien, our uh, honorary fifth fiend mm-hmm. or whatever, um, fourth fiend said the freedom fiends podcast if you swallow the poison of the state these guys will stick their finger down your throat <laughs> while holding your hair out of the toilet water yeah they're that good that's like the best endorsement not just because it's from him but that's part of it but that's like a blessing from the pope to me you know yeah it's totally our feel too like it's like he's he's definitely an honorary fiend for have, it's, having put it in those words it's longer than tasing you with liberty since 2011 but in the same ballpark but better yeah 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 excellent thanks ben we yep. love you so the last yeah. chance for buttons uh i'm gonna take orders for a couple more days and then we're we're gonna be out of them We've got tons of button orders and then we're gonna go to wholesale only you're gonna have to buy like 50 buttons if you want them after that so you can still yeah. buy the four packs for six dollars within the u.s and add five bucks extra for canada so buttons buttons going fast buttons yeah yeah it, you, i mean you can still get buy a whole bunch and distribute them to your friends hand them out on campus yeah. or whatever you do get arrested for um, free speech yeah, throw handfuls of them at the cops. No, don't do that. <laughs> Is it running away? Dude, I saw the weirdest uh, casting choice ever on CSI. Uh-huh. Justin. You, wait, 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 wait. You were watching CSI? Yeah. Oh. I like CSI. It's the shield I can't watch. Because the CSI guys just 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 find murder i mean they're still state employees and have you know all I that know, crap know, but they all they do is catch murderers you know csi they like roust drug dealers and yeah, plant yeah. drugs but, on them and beat them up but 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 you mean in the shield I mean, on the shield yeah 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 but but they in doing so they make everybody think that the state is p- providing a worthy service okay. like and like, this one was totally really really status but i just got to tell you about the okay. weirdest okay. casting tell, tell me, tell me, tell me. justin yeah, yeah, yeah. bieber is that his name the pops and uh, little the beeps. Boys. Yeah. yeah, the beeps. Justin Bieber yeah, knows about that. He played a violent militia member on CSI. <laughs> whose whose brother blew up a cop's funeral oh, and then like they oh, shot his Bieber. brother. Justin yeah. Bieber. Yeah. What they do with his hair? Did, did he still have? He the... looked just like him, but he's wearing like a flannel oh, wow. shirt or something and quoting the Constitution, <laughs> man. Wow, wow. Maybe that's uh, the CIA trying to turn cool people off of. Uh, Liberty <laughs> or not liberty? Well, but constitu- the constitution. I think yeah. it is. I think it is. But it was just the weirdest <laughs> casting choice I've ever seen in my life. It was pretty cool. Was but he good at it, or, or yeah, was it completely he ridiculous? Act. He can act yeah. for, for a singer. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of uh, acting and singers, we. I would both- think he's he's an actor first who acts like he sings. Oh, yeah. Well, we both yeah. watched a movie called "What We Do Is Secret," which is a biopic oh, yeah. of the band The Germs. Now, I had really low expectations of this movie because there's been a bunch of punk rock good old day biopics lately like the one that sucked like the one about the runaways um joan jett is actually portrayed in this when she's producing the first uh germs album they like yeah they hand over to this passed out leather clad woman on the floor and they say producer joan jett yeah, in, yeah. In the like studio. everybody's putting in work and like talking about the, the track and who needs to do what to play it better and it, it cuts to joan jett and she's just passed out yeah, no, you know, no input in the process. Kurt Cobain produced a record by the band The Melvins uh, in a studio where Bomb recorded Razor's Edge in San Francisco. Oh, yeah? And and I was like, wow, what was that like having him here? And he's like, well, he spent most of the time passed out on the couch. <laughs> I thought like Kurt Cobain was like a huge fan of The Melvins. He like, was, they but influenced he was, him. you know, on drugs, At that kicking point, drugs or exhausted. He was far gone. Three. Yeah. 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 Speaking of Nirvana, um, Pat, and Pat Smear, Smear, man. He was in the germs. Yeah. You didn't know that. 
Yeah. No, I didn't. And, and at the end, I just felt so bad for him because, like, he <laughs> takes the news. I don't know. Well, I guess spoiler alert. Whatever. Go, go watch it. Uh, but, yeah, he, he takes the call and realizes that the lead singer for The Germs just offed himself. He's well, he's like, watching oh. TV, and it's the same day that John Lennon was killed. And and it, he's, is that true? That's really how yes, it went down? Yeah. And wow. he's watching John Lennon report, you know, the report of his death right. on TV and freaking out about it because he's a punker who actually likes the Beatles. And, uh, you know, someone from his his bass player calls and she's like, did you hear the news? And he's like, yeah, it's, it's he, he horrible. He thinks she's talking about yeah. John Lennon, but she's not. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, well, I just thought it was, it was all sad and it was, it was appropriately sad and, and they built to a nice little cathartic release there. But I just thought, you know, poor Pat Smear, cause he had to deal with that twice. Cause he was in Nirvana when, yeah. when Kurt Cobain did the same exact thing. I guess not the same exact thing, not the same way, but it wasn't a know, suicide it's, pact. It's, it was accidental it's, or some say murder, yeah. but I think it was accidental. Yeah. Either way, I mean, or that's, intentional. That's I don't know, man. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah, we don't want to get into the Kurt Cobain conspiracy theories. Yeah, well, we're <laughs> not that talk, kind of conspiracy. We're going to talk show. more about what we do is secret, the movie about yeah, the germs, yeah. which is great, and it's on Netflix streaming. When we come back from selling things, yeah, I'm not really even into movies or punk, but I dug it. When the, when the promoter starts charging money, he says those lights don't run on anarchy and fishnet stockings. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. Want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. Metropipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as $7.50 a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Janeom on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E dash O-M-E. Ah, Yo. it's the fiends. What it do? Yo. Yeah. I just took a panoramic picture of my new office. I'm going to steal money from the fiends and uh, sew this together. It's four shots. I have like a oh, yeah? wall, a wall of desks along two walls, like surrounded by them with five computers. I'm jealous. Yeah, I've got two computers, but they're like I'm in like a 100 square foot space here. I'm in my closet. I'm in it's 120 bummer. square feet with a bed in it, but uh, this feels roomier, I think, probably than yours. Yeah, probably. So I've, been, I've, been, I've been experimenting with Linux, man. I'm really liking it. Yeah, I saw your screenshot, man. Yep. I hear you digging it. Yep. I think. Uh, are you on Linux right now while no, you're mumbling? No. 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 Are you I, going I've to been, be in the future? I've been doing like boot from a DVD, like dual boot kind of, or like, you know, uh -huh. live CD, live DVD, um, yeah. just to try out this particular one. Um, okay. But I'm going, I ordered a new computer, a new used computer that was like 50 bucks and would have been a great computer like four years ago. And I want to put Linux exclusively on that. I actually want to talk to some Linux people. We have a lot of fans who are Linux people. I want to talk to them about um, doing a, Fiends Linux at some point, which a Flinix, uh, a Flinix, Flinix. I really like that. Yep. Or Fleenex, like Kleenex. Fleenex. Yeah. So, um, let's talk more about this movie. What we do is secret. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, my first impression was like, cause you were telling me, yeah, he's a fascist, and I was like, oh, he's a punk, but he's a fascist, like not an anarchist. And in the first scene, they kind of address that, and the dude's and a really are, good actor. Those are from real interviews too, like the stuff he's saying. Oh, they there. are the stuff. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought the actor was really doing it justice. I mean, I don't know who the guy was. I didn't know anything about the germs. Until yeah, it's I saw not. This, there's no but... well-known actors in there at all, and it's it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. The only the best yeah. known one is the girl. The bass player is played by. 
um, Bijou Phillips, who's, I think, the oh. granddaughter of John Phillips from the Mamas and the Papas. She was freaking hot, dude. <laughs> yeah, she was. I was, I was like, damn. The girl was hot, but, the bass player. Uh, yeah, that's who I mean. Player. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, oh, wait, she's oh, based in real on, life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was. I guess I, ca- I can kind of ask you about this because you were saying, you know, it sort of portrays a part of the punk scene that you always try to tell me about and I didn't know anything about because I wasn't alive. <clears throat> um, well, in the in his first little interview, he's like, yeah, we're fascists, but we're not like Nazis. Like, I can respect Hitler for being a genius, but not for killing off all those innocent people. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it was like the way he said it. And I wanted to ask you, like... He says, yeah, we're fascists. So casual. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. Or, yeah. you know, I, I, I like to watch The Office at night kind of thing. Did, yeah. did you have to have a political philosophy if you were in the punk scene back um, then? Uh, kind of. But he was saying, like, I don't have one. This is mine. You know, uh, he was just, I think he was trying to poke people a bit, too, you know? Yeah. It was, it was a, another aspect of his performance art yes yes okay but he you know they said who do you think would be the best leader for fascism and he's like me yeah which was a very don't all fascists think that yeah i think so all politicians (laughs) secretly yeah they do yeah um and then i was wondering about the music um is that all like germs tracks that they uh, played and had him sing over I it. I think or, they or, were re-record. Your, I think I don't know what they did, but it sounds just like the Germs, a okay, lot. Okay, like the Germs. Well, in, in in the wiki page, it was saying that the guy who who plays the lead singer in the movie did a show with all the original members after the movie was over. Oh, and they, then they, do, toured. they toured and got a lot of criticism yeah. from Ian McKay and Fat Mike did they? and yeah, a whole bunch of people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because they were like, "Why? Why'd you get this Hollywood pretty boy to be? Yeah. You know. Yeah. The germs singer. were sacred to people. I mean, you know, the yeah. way you identified as a germs fan was you burned your wrist with a cigarette. You know. So like, people were really serious about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I could tell. Um, yeah, but some of the music was pretty cool. Like uh, rice, <laughs> rice krispies coming to kill you tonight. I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> all serial killer. Really, really poetic though, too. Didn't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. I thought, uh, you know, it was, it was deep, but I, I couldn't tell if it was like actually deep or if it was trying to sound deep. He was pretty smart, man. I mean, he was, you know, he was bizarre. He was, uh, you know, self-described fascist, gay, intelligent, drug addict, uh, wanted to be leader of the world, had a five-year plan, was a participant in EST, Erhard Seminar Training, which we've talked about, through yeah. his high school. And uh, he had a five-year plan, and the end of the five-year plan was killing himself. But he didn't tell anybody that till it had, you know, ever. And and he actually carried it out. I'd be like, uh, yeah, with some girl, plan, with some that. girl. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Did she actually die? Because I thought she woke no, up. No, she and was lived. Like, I don't think I'm dead yet. No, she lived. Um, yeah. yeah, I know some of the people that are the people are based on that movie. Don Bowles, the drummer. I've uh-huh. been at, I've been in the same room with him a half dozen times and had long oh, cool. talk as long talks as I could with him. I think he's really. He's damaged in some way. I don't know if he's still doing drugs or not, but he's he DJs at clubs in L.A. And uh, he tried to pick up a friend of mine's mother at a cl- at a party. Um, <laughs> yeah, Nicole Panter, I knew. She's not in the movie or featured in the movie. She was one of the managers of the Germs, not the plump lady. But uh, uh-huh. maybe that was a compilation of people. But Nicole Panter is now a co- college professor at like Caltech or something or, or some California arts college. And she paid had she paid me government money to come out and show DIY or die and lecture about oh, it nice. back in the day. <laughs> okay. And okay. uh although, you know, there were some compilations in the movie that of people that, that may have been insults intentionally, or like, for instance, when they're playing with Black Flag at one of the second to the last shows there, I think at the Fleetwood or the Starwood or something, um, the singer on stage is kind of a fat, slubby, schlubby looking bald yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, I remember um, that. I looked up they had a bunch of singers. They were, you know, like Ch- the Chavo Potter, Ch- Ch- Chavo Pot Pederast. Who um, Black Flag did? Yeah. And then Greg Cadenza or Cadenza, whatever it is, who later switched over to second guitar when Rollins joined the band. Um, and I looked up like the date that movie, it says on the screen, Rollins was the singer then. And I'm like, really? You're going to portray <laughs> Rollins as this like fat, slubby. Does Bobby Hill look like? Yeah, Bobby Hill. <laughs> With an attitude, yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, um, yeah. one of the other things I was wondering and wanted to ask you about is, um, 
You know, there was so, some mosh pits in there. Was that sort of when moshing started? Was with that scene or well, then a wiki moshing? And it said it started with the Bad Brains in DC, or at least no, that's when they started, it started calling before, it moshing. No, this was before the yeah. Bad Brains and the DC explosion. This was right. like seventy six to eighty. The germs were right. together, I think, and uh, um, Bad Brains were like seventy nine to present or something, or eighty to pre- eighty two to present. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of overlap there. Yeah, though, and cause... you know, I started going to punk rock. I was into punk rock when the Germs broke up in 1980, but I didn't go to punk shows because I didn't live anywhere that had them until I moved to DC in like '83 or '82. 80, yeah, 80, late '82. Um, so, and the scene I was in was a little more. Uh, it was different than West Coast. The West Coast was more nihilistic, destroy yourself. The East Coast DC thing was kind of like. Destroy other power. people. We have the power. <laughs> We're the kids. We're we have unity. Let's okay. change the world. You know, a little more political uh, and um, because it yeah. grew up around DC. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't yeah. as much, and it was you know the DC thing to be cool was to be straight edge, and the thing to be cool in LA Ugh. was to be a drug addict nihilist who will shoot yeah. any. Dr- Remember that scene in the movie in <laughs> where Darby like some guy brings him three vials of drugs and one of them yeah because the drug dealer wasn't home, so he says so yeah, he I just broke him. in yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He brings him three things. He's like, you know, I don't know what this one is. He's like, and, this and, is speed. This is MDMA. I don't know what this is. And Darby picks the one that he doesn't know what it is and pulls out his syringe and shoots some of it and freezes yeah. like can't move for a while. Yeah, and then it's all dramatic and somebody's like, ha, you fag, that's just ketamine. That's what homos use when they butt do each other. <laughs> no, it was like when their... they get fisted in their ass. Yeah. 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 Um. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, moshing, but we got to go uh, do things the corporate way for a little we have bit. To go do we go things sell some to, things. We have to go do things to commerce. Yeah. All right. Yo, um, it's the fiends, and what we do is secret. It is. So we're, no, we're, it's, it's quite the opposite, but yeah. fair enough. So yeah, yeah. Kurt Cobain hired uh, Pat Smear to buy some punk rock credibility after Nirvana got huge. It worked though, didn't it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Pat Smear was awesome. Yeah, in Nirvana he was. and and in the Foo Fighters afterwards. Why why did why did he leave the Foo Fighters or did he get kicked out or do you know? I don't know. I don't know. You know, you didn't care at that point. I don't care. I don't listen to Foo yeah, Fighters. I don't care. Screw. Them. I, I mean, when they come on, I know them. I like them. But yeah. I mean, that movie. I, I will just say in closing that what we do is secret is a great biopic. It was surprisingly good. It was done by an unknown director who also wrote the screenplay. It took them ten years to make it. Oh, wow. Um, it really kind of fun. What it sums up for me is like, you know, when I'm, when I'm telling you or anybody about like, like my band bomb, like it was kind of a similar scene without as much violence. And it was like, when I'm trying to tell you like the danger, the fun, the having sex with people over the pool table in the middle of a party, the shooting drugs without knowing what they are, the trips to the hospital gigs, ending in riots. You know, I've, I've done all that. I've been there, done all that. And it's like, you can't really imagine it and tell you. Or if yeah. the movie kind of shows what it was like. You want to show us how much fun you used to have? I used to be somebody. <laughs> Let me tell you about the 80s, Bobby. <laughs> I mean, about the violence. Did it get as violent, you know, in the DC scene? You said it's not as violent, but how close of an approximation? Well, I saw fights like, a lot. I saw cops come in and close down shows. I never saw any heads get busted. I saw Ian McKay punch people more than once. Okay. Well, there was he, one he's scene. He's a peacenik. He's the the straight edge founder. Yeah, he's a really good guy. I like him. He's really uh, you know peace loving and never. He's well, like I can't believe I used to fight. Well, there there was this one scene where there's like this riot at one of their shows. I forget why because it seems like all their shows end <laughs> like that. And uh, the camera shows what looks like riot shields. You don't really see like police paraphernalia other than a riot shield. And and then you see it ends club. with like a club hitting the camera over and over again, and then to black. That actually uh, happened. You know, there's uh, one of Henry Rollins's books has a cov- a photo on the cover of like black flag marquee at a theater like playing at a big theater and there's uh-huh. like 50 riot cops lined up in front of the theater. Oh you really? Ever seen that picture? I'll find that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that could be uh that stuff the, happened. Could be the podcast photo for today. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh the other thing I wanted to talk about is I brought up moshing earlier. Um what do you think of the idea as a mosh pit as uh, an anarchic order or an example, like kind of like an autonomous zone? A mosh pit is an. Um, I never really liked moshing. Uh, people got kind of violent with it, you know, because jocks would show up and think, "Oh, you just hit people," you know. Um, 
But yeah, I, punk rock cl- shows and clubs were often autonomous zones. Um, I mean, a lot of them were underground in unlicensed clubs and either sold booze or didn't. And like they'd have a show or two until it got closed down and then move it somewhere else. And it was like word of mouth where it would be. And uh, yeah, they were definitely like kind of, you know, I mean, punkers had no love of the cops, put it that way. Yeah. Well, I kind of feel like even today in, in non-punk scenes uh, or just, you know, rock or metal scenes too, um, mosh pits are like an autonomous zone, even within the autonomous zone. Um, if anything, because the state doesn't have a mon- monopoly of violence there, you know, <laughs> everybody has the the right for violence. and uh, But it's not collectivized either. Like, I feel like it's... It's sort of a natural order, and if people get out of hand, they get thrown out of the mosh pit, usually by the people moshing themselves, and usually it's confined to its own space. Like, the people who don't want to mosh don't have to. They just stand on the edges or get back. So I'm sending you this picture of the Black Flag uh, with the show with the riot cops all walking into it, um, and it's KROQ Presents, which is Rodney on the Rock, that weird DJ who's in the Jones oh, yeah. movie. yeah. Played yeah. really well. I've met him. I met him at a party with Olivia Barish from uh, the movie Repo Man. She brought him up to San Francisco to show him off. And he was at a party, and he was like, you know, looked about 60, and he was sitting over in the corner. It's about 1995. And he's like looking around like, why aren't people recognizing me and trying to get me to do <laughs> things for them like they do in L.A.? Well, he's a radio guy anyway, so like yeah. people actually know what he looked like. Yeah, because he was like running clubs in person and like you know making bands. Like if he liked your band, man, you were it. Yeah, and he liked. He the was germs. the king. He was the kingmaker. He was the kingmaker. The, yeah. the fascist kingmaker. And the germs were the first. The ki- the maker of fascist kings. He wasn't a fascist. Okay. Um, he's a really yeah, sweet yeah. guy, from what I hear. But uh, he also ran a label. But yeah, I mean, the germs were the first band to put out a single in L.A. The first punk band. So you know that kind of blows my mind. Like. Those guys really? Because in the movie, it's portrayed as like it was kind of like a not a joke to them, but it's not like they had chops or had been working at it for years. They just sort of put out a record. Right. That was the first punk single yeah. put out in L.A. Yeah, why? But because nobody took just, it seriously. Like you're not taking it seriously right now. Although you know they got better as they went on. I mean, they, by yeah, the end yeah. of that, they were raging. They were great. Yeah. I guess I guess that just speaks to you know when punk started was like yeah. with them in L.A. He could still never sing though. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. yeah look at yeah. look at your email. I just sent you the picture. I'll maybe use that for the episode today. Will that work okay. with what we're calling it? Status just want to put people in jail for having fun or something? Yeah, yeah, this, dude, that totally this totally works. <laughs> they're <with> going <laughs> they're going into a marquee about to keep everybody from having they're, fun at the going, concert. They're going to an, they're going into a, yeah a show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That building behind that is where my friend Blaine's office used to be. Okay. It's on. Uh, okay. Oh, I can't remember Sunset and something. Sunset and Gower, which is kind of like the beginning. Like you hear people say, like you know, Hollywood people, are like, yeah, I never go east of Gower. Like that's kind of where Holly, the the real Hollywood begins, is Gower and Sunset. Okay, okay, it gets ghetto on the other side. Yeah, and I lived about two or three miles on the other side from where the cops were coming on the ghetto side. Uh, two uh, or three miles okay. more ghetto. Yeah, <laughs> it is getting pro- progressively more ghetto. Yeah, and then you get past Silver Lake where I lived, which is where a lot of this movie was filmed, actually. And then you get to Echo Park where I used to live before that. And then you get to East L.A. where, like, I wouldn't even go in the daytime if I could help it, man. It's where a lot of the shield takes place. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that where the Cheech and Chong character Cheech says he's from? Born East LA. in East L.A. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Score. Yeah. Doesn't he do, like, a cop show now? Or didn't he yeah, do a cop well, show? Yeah, well, he did. He did... Uh, Streets is what's the San Francisco one with uh, Don Johnson? I forget. It was horrible. Man, he does something else now. Although yeah. Cheech and Chong got back together and like did a their old stoner characters and didn't add for something really cheesy and everyone hated him mm, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I guess once something like that time has passed, you might as well just. Well, yeah, it's like reforming the germs with an actor, Pretty Boy, singing. You know. <laughs> Although I'm I'm none the wiser. Like to me, when I think of the germs, I'll always think of that little actor pretty boy well you should go uh, watch and that hot blonde chick playing the bass you should go watch some scenes on youtube from the movie decline of western civilization which is which shown is in there germs yeah, yeah well it's it's the whole scene but you know penelope spheres the director comes up and says yeah i want to film you and she you know darby's like we can't play anywhere and she's like i'll rent a place though those scenes are in that movie decline and uh and 
it's what, on what's, YouTube. What's that movie like? Is it like, hey, cool, the decline of Western civilization, or is it like, look at this, the decline of Western well, civilization? She was not an insider. It, it's cool. It's not judgmental, but yeah. you know, I mean, then she did like a metal version of that film, and then like, then she went on to be like, you know, a high school, I mean, not a high school, a Hollywood director, you know, like a big Hollywood director. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. what did she do? Okay. She did the Beverly Hillbillies in Wayne's World, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, Wayne's yeah. World is pretty awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, totally. Which I think I there's some of... I don't I even think... have a gun, let alone multiple guns, which I would need a rack for. What are you saying? When she bought, when she buys Wayne a, a gun rack for... Well, I can't I remember I guess for scene. his birthday. You can't? Okay. I don't know why it just stuck out. Who in my buys head, who buys Wayne a gun rack? Wayne's ex girlfriend, who he doesn't want to see anymore. <laughs> I don't she even buys have a him gun. a gun rack. He's, he's like, I don't even have a gun. That's let alone multiple guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting how he talks in there because he seems really stupid, but occasionally he says things that are eloquent, but still says them stupid. Yeah, so yeah I can picture yeah. him. I could totally hear him doing that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do it justice at all. I can't remember the, how he talks. Why don't you give the number out? We are a call in show. Ah, yeah, I guess we are. Uh, okay, the number is 307-215-5171. Go ahead and give us a call and uh, tell us <laughs> what you want to hear about. Oh, yeah. But uh, maybe you should wait until after this Our little selling. chunk of yes. commerce. Yes. Yeah. The Fiends, what we do is secret. That's why we use encryption. Right? I guess. Uh. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so um, we were talking. Uh, uh, there's not even any music. Like we, we must there have been was. talking we, through no, all we got the, the last. Music. I heard the last little bit of it. We were talking about okay. Linux, and I uploaded the Guns and Weed movie trailer, the official final trailer yesterday. I uploaded the like trailer a year ago. Oh, Fiend phone's calling. Who's this? Who's this on the Fiend? Phone? Oh, it's so quiet. I can I barely I hear the Fiend phone. Up. Hello, Fiend. Who's this? Hey, it's uh, Ross from the Don't Channel Meme Dime Card thing. Are you going to sue us for oh, uh, copyright up, infringement because we're doing dime cards? I don't know. No, no, no. Drew makes those. I know. <laughs> That's his gig. I'm not I'm not part of that. Uh, what are you guys talking about right now? Um, it, Whatever you want to talk about. Linux. Or whatever you want to talk about. Oh, okay. When I was just watching... Um, this, have you seen Billy Joe up, like, um, throw a tant- tantrum on stage? From Green Day? No. Yeah, yeah, okay, so he was at the iHeart Radio Festival, which, I don't know, was like going on now or something in Vegas, and they cut his the a Green Day set from 25 minutes down to one minute to make room for Usher. And <laughs> they, cut his set to, they cut one the minute, set to that's one minute? Set. Hey, dude, if you're a punk rock band, that could be a set, but... Um, yeah, wait, they, no, they cut it by like, one minute, or they cut it to one minute? They cut it to one minute because, like, there was a screen at the oh, back geez. of the room. You can watch the YouTube of it. Um, I'm and, watching like, it. So he threw a tent. I'm watching yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I called. I thought I'd call y'all up because you know Michael 
you know, you're real punk. You've got real punk cred compared to Green Day, which sadly, I mean, I loved, I loved Green Day. Dookie came out in fourth grade for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, we used but, to, my band Dookie Bomb, was the shit. Wasn't my it? band Bomb used to play the same club that they were broken, Gilman Street Project in uh, Berkeley. I mean, I was around that scene. I like some of their stuff a lot, but, you know, People should just play music and not talk about politics. That guy says he's a libertarian, but then he goes and like gives rants about Obama and gives rants about what's wrong with gun owners. And the guy drives me nuts. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. I thought, yeah, I kind of had the feeling that he was a uh, he didn't really know where he stood in politics at all. But just from the fact that I think it was a few years ago, Pete Shelley from the Buzzcocks called him out and like, yeah, he's not punk. So that's kind of all I needed to hear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you seen that Germs movie so, we were talking about? What we do is secret. No. It's really oh, good. but I. Anyway, I I did watch that Triumph of the Will upon your um, recommendation. That's crazy, like hilariously <laughs> oh. bad. Well, the the Nazi propaganda thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the filmmaking is amazing. Yeah, I agree. It's it's moving. I mean, it was groundbreaking. It actually like brought filmmaking forward but yeah it was used for horrible purposes what's this new movie you're talking about it's called what we do is secret it's a biopic about the band the germs i was just thinking about it because you were talking about like some some older punk rocker calling some other punk rocker out and there's a scene in this in the movie we're talking about where the germs play their first gig and like they totally can't even play yet and the two the two or three of the guys from um the damned who are playing across the street come to see him and they end up like uh -huh. throwing flour and beer on him and insulting him. And I mean, that'd be kind of like if you were playing in your garage and Jimmy page showed up and you kicked him in the nuts, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like, Oh no. Uh, what do you guys think? I was going to make a, like a co-branding cooperative shirt for you guys. And it says on it, tone the drones. <laughs> would, would you guys like that? Would you guys? I like it. I it it rhymes. Meme, uh, I think. Say it again. Yeah, it just clone the drums. Yeah. Cl clone the drums, yeah, I don't man. Know, maybe. Well, you know that could be like the printable when they get the printable gun project perfected. They could do a printable drone project and call it clone the drones. Clone yeah, the drones. Yeah. Did you say you sent you sent an wrong. image of it? Yeah, I don't know because we. When Ernie Hancock's workshop here, we can make T-shirts and, and and stuff. And um, I'm gonna go and make some new T-shirts for because we're going to Libertopia and we're gonna represent the dive car. Tell you what I mean. And I'll see if I'm making a new design. But uh, not a big hurry. Just wanted to run that slogan past y'all. And you know, if you wouldn't mind, like I'd I'd throw your your project on there with like three of the four projects to get you up. What for a street. dime card? You mean? I mean, yeah, if you want to throw me like a Guns and Weed DVD, I'll send you some shirts. I don't know. Just, just kick it around. Huh. Uh, shirts? Um, we should talk offline about this. It's, uh, it sounds like something we'd want to do, but no one wants to hear us work out the details of a business deal in here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. What's, um, what's, that's your, it. Yeah. what's your name? I'll, what's your name on Facebook? Where do I find you? Oh, it's Ross Edwards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In Scottsdale? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I added you as a friend. You can accept cool. my gift It'll of friendship and uh, we'll work it out. Awesome. Cool. cool yeah. No, I just called in about the about Billy Joe. Oh, and then at the end, you got to watch. He tries to smash his guitar and he almost doesn't like succeed. Do I saw it. It. Yeah. It, it almost doesn't break. <laughs> they make them better than they did in the 60s. Yeah. We got yeah, another yeah. caller trying to get in. I'm going to let him get on here. Man. Okay. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling, man. Anytime. Yep. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. All right, whoever called, call right back. Yeah, the fiends, man. Dime cards, yeah, merch, yeah. good. I'm wow. holding, I'm holding some dime cards right now. I finally got my, finally, Drew sent me my fiends dime cards. He will send you yours quicker. Basically, what happened is, mine got stolen the, by the, the government. Post stole office, it. The government. And then he gave me five of them as a replacement, which is pretty cool. But it took a while to get them, so I got them. They look good. Right, right. Uh, I'm gonna give one uh, to my dad because he used to use these dimes when he was younger, and he talks about. He's the guy that taught me. When I was a kid, like if you ever see this pre sixty four dimes, hold on to them; they're worth money. Yeah, he was right. Yeah, yeah. And these are mercury dimes, right? Yeah, they're not the fascist oh. dimes. Although they have the fascist stick on the back, but not the okay. fascist man on the front. Right, fascist stick, not the fascist stick. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Wayne's World. 
So, so I saw. A, a, go ahead. I was just gonna say, man, how horrible would that be to actually try to break your guitar and not have it break? Like that'd be the most embarrassing. That, that's almost as embarrassing as being a football team and like bouncing off the banner instead of like breaking <laughs> through it. Yeah. 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 I have a correction from uh, a while. Oh back. yeah, that's a- uh, yeah. I said on the on the gumbo that um that L. Neil Smith was the guy who was gonna sue somebody and or no send this law firm of Smith and Wesson for someone copying his books. That was actually J. Neil Schumann, but L. Neil Smith has a similar ideology about intellectual property. But uh, it was J. J. Neil Schumann. Yeah, yeah. Well, even if L. Neil Smith's position is similar, like I've never heard him say anything that loopy or crazy about it. You know, <laughs> right. in a right. in a forum with other libertarians, like that's the worst thing. He's like this. I don't even know who J. Neil Schumann is. Like, what did he write? You know what I was I was trying to think of last night? I used to screw this girl named Carolyn, who was the first drummer for the band Hole. And I was like, I, I ran across her online on Falling Down Wormholes. And I'm like, how did I end up sleeping with her? I can't remember. And it you know went on for a week or two. And I'm like, wow, how did that happen? Hmm. I can't remember. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I think you just wanted to ba- brag about how you banged the drummer from Hole. I did, but I really liked what Darby <laughs> Crash said in the movie. We don't have groupies. You know, maybe the first night they're groupies, but then you hang around with them and they become yeah, friends. Yeah. If they're driving they're, you places, they're, they're not groupies yeah. anymore. They're friends. Yeah. So we don't have any groupies because they all become <laughs> our friends. Yeah. I was kind of her groupie, though, and she was my groupie, Carolyn. Yeah. You, you were co-groupies. Carolyn Rue from Hole. Yeah. What, what, what point in Hole's uh, career was this? After she got kicked out. Oh, after the drummer got kicked out. Okay. Yeah. Was this was it's this what, after Kurt Cobain was dead? No, they got signed no. and uh, kicked her out oh, okay. immediately. Okay. Well, they needed yeah. a better drummer. Yeah. Courtney Courtney Love stole her dre- Carolyn's dress style and then kicked her out. <laughs> yeah. The Kinderhor yeah. thing was chew all you Carol. up and spit. The, the, out. the Kinderhor thing was all Carolyn. Kinderhor. That's a good name for it. Yeah. I've what's what they call before. it? Yeah. That's what they oh, call it? Okay. Kinderhor. Yeah. Yeah, that's dirty. That's dirty. <laughs> so I've lost 14 and a half pounds on the Fiends diet. Did I say that? Yeah, I did. You did, yeah. Okay. But you're so proud of it. I'm pretty you can proud say it of again it. if you want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. I just I can't stop eating bread. Somebody help me. Yeah. Bread is I try, basically I, building material. It is. It is. I like don't eat it outright. We don't buy bread. It's just when you eat fast food, it, you, it's kind of hard not to. So I have another movie recommendation. It's kind of got a libertarian angle. Yeah. Uh, it's a really awesome, amazing, dark, beautiful film by Nick Cassavetes, same guy that did Alpha Dog. 2000, oh, yeah. 2009 yeah. movie called My Sister's Keeper. It was heavy for me because it's about a girl dying from leukemia. And the libertarian part of it is uh, her 11-year-old sister sues her parents for medical emancipation because she was bred to be a organ bank for her sick right. sister. Awesome yeah. movie. I highly recommend it, it. It does sound deep, and I think we can talk a little bit about how it made you feel philosophically right. after we uh, engage in some more commerce. I love commerce. Me too. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. We got me using the ribbon mic today instead of the condenser. And uh, we we were having some problems. We have a theory. We're wondering if maybe uh, the static from the condenser was making me sound a little noisy, like poppy, glitchy. Because they work uh, on they work on static. Basically, they create electrical yeah. charge across two thin sheets of gold, you know, micrometers apart, and uh, creates right. capacitance. Which is why they don't work well in the winter when it's really staticky. They start sounding brittle. But I think it was picking up pops. Um, and my theory is like. You know, when you record music, you're up and down all the time, and you're probably in front of that mic for three minutes at a time. When you're doing the show, you're yeah. in front of it for 20 or 30 minutes. You're moving back and forth with your butt in the chair, fabric rubbing on fabric. You know, you're, a human body has a certain amount of capacity. It's you're creating static, and you're up on the mic, and I think you were making pops on it. Cause I, I plus, heard- plus, I have a giant beard, and I talk really <laughs> close to the mic, so maybe the beard is you know moving yeah. around, good rubbing we, the pop filter. Good thing we fixed like this, or I'd be like, dude, you got to shave that beard for the, for your art. <laughs> for the fiends, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I just heard a pop. I really do. Uh, I think I heard the first one. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Well, let us know. G- call us. Uh, give us some feedback. It's uh, 307-215-5171. Again, that is 307-215-5171. That's the Fiends calling number, y'all. So this movie, uh, My Sister's Keeper. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I saw a, I saw a trailer for it in 2009, and I was like, there's no effing way in hell I'm seeing this movie. I saw one ad for it. It was kind of like, you know, one of those like big indies or small Hollywood movies to where like they do one day of ads on TV or something. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. first of all, it was like, oh, it's about a girl dying of leukemia. Just what a guy who's only fiend phone, kid died fiend of phone wants to see. Fiend phone, fiend phone. Hang on a second there, Fiend. Let me finish this thought, please. And the other thing was the trailer really made it look like um, an after-school special. You know, they, uh-huh, they, uh-huh. they the t- trailers are never accurate. They, they, so. they were going for the Oprah audience. Yep. Okay. So who's the Fiend on the line here? Uh, well, that's one of your fans from Canada, Rico. Hey, Rico. Oh, Rico, buttons. what's How up? How are you doing? Didn't you yeah. get in trouble for the buttons? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Why? Because yeah. your wife said there's hot chicks on most of them. That's right. <laughs> cool. He was mad. Did, did you say? No. Did you say not as hot as you, baby? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> okay, good. That's that's the appropriate yeah. married response. My wife said, "Wow, I don't really like those hot chicks, but you know, sex sells. I think that's smart." That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh well, yeah. Well, she's smart. Yeah. You know, you know I, now I'm that I married. think of it, my wife was upset too when she saw the <laughs> the Freedom Fiend model. She hates her. I don't know why. She's just like, she I can't believe her. you have a Freedom Fiend model, you <laughs> bastard. I know. And not only do we have a Freedom Fiend model, we have like a hot Eastern European Freedom Fiend model. Yeah, she's from Croatia, yeah. and she's actually done some modeling. So, and she's a Fiend fan. She's gonna call in one of these days on Skype. But the problem is, like, she works early in the morning, and our show is the middle of the night for her. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the one with the, the medical marijuana? No, no, the marijuana? one with the, the Fiend's t-shirt. It's just oh. a freedom Fiend. Oh, she's she's real? Yeah, the she's one? real. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's wearing a homemade t-shirt. <laughs> no, well, she, thought... she was computer generated. <laughs> she's a yeah, fiend. yeah, that's that's what I thought. Yeah, the one on the freedomfiends.com page. Yeah, you thought yeah. that was computer generated? Yes, I did. <laughs> well, there is something kind of highly... St- like, she took it on a... On a, a solid color background and i kind of turned up the saturation on the picture in photoshop a yeah little bit. it was, it was um, tweaked okay. it was, it was, it was tweaked, definitely tweaked but mm-hmm. she looks like that i mean her name's iva uh, if you go to the freedom fiends um faq page there's a who's the one of the questions is who's the hot chick in your pictures and there's a link yeah. to, there's a link to her facebook page man i don't want to i don't want to get her bugged by people but yeah I think don't, don't stalk respectful. her please i think yeah, our fans are no, no, no. Well, yeah, i mean I'll just if you, you want to go see that she's a real person yeah oh yeah there i see her yeah yep there you go anyway so what's on what's on your mind um, today man uh well many things you know just calling talking about buttons Talk about University, what? I think buttons. Buttons. Sorry, my French accent. Buttons. <laughs> buttons. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're gonna. Uh, I think the extra pack there that you sent me, uh, they're gonna be pretty popular on the campus here. Cool. The university. Cool. Yeah. What 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 campus? Are you a student? Yeah. Uh, university. I'm taking history. I called you guys okay. uh, a while back. There. Uh, that was a while. You, when when I said that uh, Stefan Maltu were interviewed with anyway, he hosted the Peter Schiff show, and that's how yeah. I. Yeah. I don't know if you. Guys, you're you're yeah. sounding really crunchy, man. I can barely understand you. Is there anything you can change on your close other computer programs or something on your Skype or are you on a phone? I'm on Skype? my phone right now. Here, I'll uh, take by a landline. Yeah. I don't know if it is that uh, is that better. Why don't you call back on your landline, or is it the same number? Okay. Is it the same bye. number? Okay, bye. Bye. All right. All right, so hopefully we'll hear from Rico again in a little bit here. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think I remember him calling and talking to us a little bit about his experience at the university. Yeah. Um, don't remember Hello? the name of the university. Hello. Though. Oh, there he is. What's up, man? Hey. Hey. It worked? That sounds much better. Yes, Oh, so you have does. the same number for your home and your landline? I mean, you're, f- you're selling your landline? How do you do that? Uh, I don't know. It worked. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a weird it's a it's a weird university package. I don't know how it works. <laughs> it's so they anyway. can it's so they can listen to all of it. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm looking at uh, Iva. I can see how you would think Iva is computer generated. 
Yeah, she, well, I, I, I didn't really knew. I kind of guess. I mean, she, she could definitely play, like, you know, some sci-fi vampire chick in some post-apocalyptic yeah. movie without a lot of changes. That's right. You know? And there's a picture of her on here with her face all painted up with an octopus, an actual octopus on her head. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Where? That's that's not on the on the Facebook no, page. Or? Yeah, go to her Facebook page and just click through her pictures. Maybe you have to be her friend to click through them. I don't know. Yeah. But you can write her and say I'm a friend of the fiends, and uh, <laughs> and I won't. Buy See, I, I don't I, know. <laughs> are you gonna hand yeah. out the buttons at school, or what do you plan to do with them? I don't know. I'll try. Um, awesome. Well. Things are pretty statist over here, but uh, <laughs> I bet, yeah. <laughs> I'll give it a yeah. They'll, but, outlaw, uh, yeah. they'll outlaw fiends buttons in your province. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I got a I got a Gagson flag on my wall. I got a Ron Paul poster. I hope they don't come in my room. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do your friends? What, what do your friends at the university say? Do you try to talk to them about uh, liberty versus statism? Is that a conversation well, that's open? Yeah. I, I, I try to make it. I, I try to make it not too, uh, not too heavy. Just yeah. mention it there. You know, mention the, the name Michael the Dean, so it, the name <laughs> of Daddy, so it, you know, it registers. Well, I'm o- I'm okay to mention in academia because I've written other books before I became libertarian anarchist that uh, are actually like recommended reading in some colleges and required reading in a couple colleges you know the film yeah. my film series film film music and uh writing school books are textbooks published by a textbook company so i mean they might even be in the library uh, they are a lot of universities so you can mention that and then uh, yeah that's great you had the 99 cents film school yeah right. well that was 30 dollar uh, originally the idea was i i was going to write up everything i knew $30. about film school about filmmaking you know this like 40 page pdf and i put it up and I had the URL for a while, 99centfilmschool.com. And like 2,000 people donated it and not a single one made a donation. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go get a book deal and expand this. And I did. And uh, I'm still paying my rent. I mean, my mortgage on the rent and then now mortgage <laughs> on that book. So it worked out okay. Well, on a libertarian film I liked. Which one? Um, it's called Shenandoah. Oh, yeah. Talk about it. I've not seen it. Have you, Nima? No, oh, you didn't talk it. about it. No, we've not talked about it. I was you posted that on a thread where I was saying that the libertarian film we made, Guns and Weed: The Road to Freedom, is showing at a film festival in Colorado next week. That was how it came. Yeah, out. no, I love your film. Yeah, uh, no, I haven't seen Shenandoah. Tell us all about it. Well, it's uh, it's got uh, Jimmy Stewart. It's a it's a Hollywood film from the '60s, and it's <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable that he plays an anarcho-capitalist character. Really. Really? Yeah, huh. yeah. That both the conspiracy and the union are trying to involve him in the war, and he tells both sides to go to hell. <laughs> I love that. Now, when was it made in the in the fifties? That was made in the sixties. It's in the sixties. It's kind okay. of low budget. Uh, it's quality production, but kind of made on the budget of a TV series like The Big Valley or something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Uh, how does it end? Does he win, or is it like uh, you shall not be anarcho-capitalist because you will lose? You can't fight the state, kind of a thing, or is it is it optimistic? Uh, you know, he goes through a lot of travails because you know the Civil War is hard on everyone, and right, he right. spends a lot of it searching for his youngest son, who was um, who was uh, captured as a the Union thought he was a Confederate soldier, which he wasn't. So he spends most of the war trying to track down his son. And, uh, but at the end, uh, you know, he pulls his family together, uh, you know, with great loss. Like he loses, uh, he loses mm-hmm. his eldest son. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, got it. Uh, definitely got he's it. not like, uh, got it. He's not considered got- like a loser in the movie. Like, got it. Well, well, ne- you never think like he did the wrong thing. Yeah, and I want to know. It's um, on my DVD queue for Netflix right now. I added it. Yeah, I, I kind of want to see it too. Is is it streaming on Netflix or is it just DVD on Netflix? Just DVD. Michael? Just DVD. Uh, okay. I've seen yeah. the movie poster before. I always thought it was John Wayne. I kind of looked at it like without looking too closely. You know, it's got a cowboy and horses and a couple kissing. Is is Abraham Lincoln yeah, portrayed at all Wayne's, in the movie? Uh, sons in it. Ah, how's Abraham Lincoln portrayed in it? Uh, Lincoln. Uh, not really portrayed at all. I, you know, I can't even remember a mention of him. Hmm. Okay. It's much more on a local level 
Well, you just see the people that, you know, that uh, Charlie Anderson, the character, has to deal with. You know, they, they come out to his farm to kind of, like, impress his sons into the Confederate Army, and uh, he's not having any of that. And then the Union comes right. by to take his horses for the Union Army, and he kind of kicks their ass. <laughs> and, uh, and all all that stuff happened too. You know, we're going to take your sons, we're going to take your horses, and yeah. that happens all over the world in wars everywhere. And it's the patriotic yeah, thing yeah. to do to comply. Yeah, well, you know, he gives some great anti-state speeches in the movie. So, you know, I urge people to check it out. Oh, we will, man. Got anything yeah, else on your awesome. mind? Uh, that's it for today. Love your show. Love your movie. Cool, man. All right, man. Cool. We tell appreciate two, it. Tell two friends. Okay. Thanks, Thanks bro. One more. Bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. We we should start saying tell all of your friends. Yeah. Why, well, why, just, two, why just two, Tell right? two friends is a takeoff on something that's before everyone's time who calls in to the show probably. it's There was an ad uh, in like the 60s, late 60s, early 70s for like, I think it was for like baby shampoo or something. And at the end, they were like, tell two friends. And then they uh. had another variation on it where it's like, he told two friends, and they told two friends, and they told. It was okay. like a, it was yeah, explaining yeah, yeah. like viral media in 1970 or something. Yeah, you know, it was <laughs> okay. a viral advertising campaign in 1970. Well, we need to update it based on the Ron Swanson Tell model of bacon friends. and eggs. Yes. Tell two thousand friends. What's how's it? Well, Ron Swanson, he says, um, "Give me all the bacon and eggs you have." He says, "I don't, I, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I don't mean a lot of bacon and eggs. I mean all of the bacon and eggs you have." So we should, we should tell people to tell all of the friends they have. Hey, have you seen this thing Facebook's doing? A screenshot someone posted of, "Please help us make Facebook better. Please help us understand how people are using Facebook. Your response is anonymous and won't affect your friend's account." is this your friend's real name? And it's got a picture in the name of one of your Ooh. friends. And the answers are yes, no, I don't know this person, and I don't want to answer. Ah, and I've heard if you say I don't know this person, they they do something to that friend. You've heard that? I've heard that. I don't know if it's true. It was just on a Facebook wall. I, I can't. Mean, I don't think they would take... delete them. I think, oh, you know what they do? It's if the person, it's probably if the person's adding you as a friend and they've been adding several people a day. Because um, ah, I've, okay. you know, I've never gotten this before, but um, I've gotten blocked on Facebook for two weeks a couple times to where I can only read stuff that I started the post, and I can't uh, uh -huh. email, I can't message people, and I can't post on other people's sites. And I think it's it was a few times, you know, and it's effed up because Facebook, you know, says people you might be interested in and enlist like 10 people and I would just add them all. Yeah, yeah, click on add friend, but it's suggesting them to you. Right, and then one yeah. of them says, I don't know this person, and then they block you. Uh, Man, corporations uh -huh, uh -huh. are pissing me off. Okay, like, first of all, I found out from Ben Quaker, the reason real light bulbs are illegal is because GE's patent expired, so they came up with a new light bulb and patented that and then forced the government to make everybody switch over. That wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> and then and then Facebook's doing all this crap. And then YouTube, I started getting, like, first of all, they're demanding your real name. And second of all, um, every email I was getting from them was crashing my email browser. And then I went in oh. to try to, like, I, I went in to try to turn off email sending. It's really hard now to find that. And it's really hard to find your inbox. Like, basically... And it's hard to message people. Basically, they don't they don't want people to talk to each other anonymously or at all on there anymore. They just want to, you know, show you trailers for Hollywood movies. That's what they're yeah, aiming yeah. the site at. It's really sad. I haven't had the same experience with YouTube yet. But then again, it took me like a month after everybody else was forced into uh, timeline on Facebook before I did. So maybe it's just gonna. Uh, You're you know, a late adopter. People at different times. <laughs> yeah, without, I'm a late. Uh, yeah. Unvoluntary, involuntary adopter. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you know, it's a shame because because YouTube and Facebook, they're so important. Like I, I, I think they really do feel fill a niche, and people want to use them. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe we need some better competition. I don't then, know what the answer is, but well, it's really hard to start a social network. The, where yeah. where competition is easier is creating utilities like. Skype mm -hmm. is getting really horrible and like Microsoft owns it now and they did that drive by install of it last week. And uh but you know, there's other utilities out there. We called There's tons we, of other we, utilities. There's Jitsi, yeah. which we tried and it was okay, it was better than Skype. Um 
you know, starting. For now, to, we're sticking with Mumble, but hey, those are two great options that aren't yeah, Skype. Yeah. But Jitsi doesn't require buying a server for three bucks a month, ah, like Mumble that's does. True. Completely free. Although you have to use a different account. Other, you can't create a Jitsi account. Yeah. You have to go through another account. Oh. So, uh, yeah. That's up there. Fiends. Yep. yep. All right, folks. Back to the Freedom Fiends. In case y'all want to give us a call, it's uh, 307-215-5171. Give us a ring. Again, that is 307-215-5171. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, I kind of want to start a pirate radio station. That'd be no. pretty awesome. No, you don't. No? All right. We don't I want laws. to, but I guess we don't. We don't break laws. We don't. Laws, laws are part of the social contract, just, brother. I'm, I'm playing this, <laughs> this old school video game that has uh, a pirate radio that everybody listens to in the game called Jet Set Radio. Well, we have it's, that. It's such it's, a cool it's game. It's, 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 it's got graffiti. It's got pirate radio. It's got cops that are the bad guys that you have to spray paint in the face and, and run away from. Um, it's, it's awesome. Y'all should check it out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're getting more popular than ever. We're uh, going to have a banner download month here. We're at like... 3.3 gigs right now and there's still a week left of the month um last month was our or month before one of the last two months was our highest ever you mean you mean 3.3 ter terabytes. terabytes yeah yeah 3.6 terabytes uh yeah and we're at 3.3 right now and uh yeah yeah so thank you fiends for listening we love you yeah actually yes. i'll check it i'll check the stats i'll steal some time from the fiends no I'll it's not stealing stats. You're you're being transparent, right? You're, uh, we're you're at doing, three point you're, yeah, three point four right now, three point four awesome. terabytes, and uh, we got something we really still cool. Got a week left. We got something really cool coming up. Oh yeah, by tomorrow it'll be over three point six when this new episode comes out. We got yeah, something really cool coming up. I kind of can't talk about it, but I'm gonna because it's All not right. set in stone yet. But it's pretty much gonna happen. Um, I think we're gonna be syndicated on um the Podfather's No Agenda Radio stream. No Agenda is uh. Is uh is Adam Curry's, you know Adam Curry basically co-invented podcasting and he used to be an MTV VJ and he is a computer guy and he's a libertarian anarchist and uh he's got a great show that's incredibly popular one of the most popular indie podcasts out there called No Agenda and he started a stream like an LRN type thing mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna be on I'm pretty sure we're gonna be on there I don't know if we're gonna be just rebroadcast or doing I'd like to do another live show a third you know third show a week well we, we don't know the details yet but they've expressed interest and yeah. uh, you're gonna talk to them very soon so mm -hmm. uh, I mean as long as they don't you know ask for my firstborn child you yeah know, it's probably pretty likely or exclusivity because uh, I, I wouldn't walk away from LRN they've done really good by us and we've Oh yeah, you know, yeah, we, we love LRN. We won't be yeah. leaving. And the only reason we bring that up is because it seemed kind of funny that uh, Scott Horton moved his live show to No Agenda stream, but he's not doing the LRN live show anymore. So we were wondering no, we don't, why. We don't know that's that funny. Happened. It's just it's. I mean, funny sounds suspect. I don't think it's suspect. I'm sure there's a reason. No, I don't think I don't it's suspect. It we just we didn't know why that happened. I guess, that's yeah. what I mean by funny. Is like I was like, huh? Why did that happen? I'm like, why couldn't you do it on both? I mean, I have enough computers. Yeah. I could figure out how to stream us to two streams yeah. live at once. I mean, we do a simulcast with just just a mail to mail eighth inch wire into a computer yeah so it's doable you just got to do it the morphine's the merrier man <laughs> morphine merrier merrier morphine yeah so what i'll do sounds is like, I'll, sounds like a name brand i'll talk to the guy on tuesday we have an appointment and if he doesn't want your firstborn child um okay. you know, we'll do it i'll get I'll i mean get, second I'll get... or third we can maybe work something out <laughs> depending on compensation we'll see yeah some sort of indentured servitude of the third child would be acceptable. <laughs> there you go yeah. no the, the second one and we'll, we'll keep the third one because they'll have middle child syndrome anyway so there you go the damage he's gonna one. listen to this in like 20 years and be like i hate you dad <laughs> you always felt that way about me he'll require years of therapy and I'm, i'll just be like you were an accident man i don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> And then on his 18th birthday, you give him a shoe shine kit and a list of homeless shelters and kick him out. <laughs> I actually had a friend who on his 18th birthday, his dad gave him a shoe shine kit and kicked him out of the house. Wow. Which there's nothing unlibertarian about that, but it's pretty harsh. And the guy ended up being a strung out drug addict and dying of AIDS. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not, but. Yeah, it's not like it violates the non-aggression principle, but it's a pretty dirty, mean thing to do. Yeah. I guess because I, I feel I feel like it it says, "Hey, son, I have no faith in you, and I don't like you either." Well, I don't know what their relationship was either or not. And yeah. His dad, his dad's dad, had been the president of Mexico for one month until they cut off his oh. head and then put his heart in a jar in the National Museum, and it's still there. 
Right. All you had yeah. to say was his dad was president of Mexico. We assume that's how they all end, right? Well, that was like right after the revolution. It was the <laughs> that, first. That's president. racist. I'm kidding. President I'm kidding. Carranza. Yeah. He. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yep. Don't they have a um, a law in Mexico that you can presidents can't run for re-election? You can only be president once. They have one term limit on presidency. I don't know. I mean, I don't care about politics anymore, but I'd like that for Congress here, man. Because Congress you think, here, you Congress think, here, you think that help anything? I don't know uh, if that help anything. Not in the long run, but in a way, it would because people become career politicians and just you know, basically. Although the problem is, the other end of that is, if you only had one term. You're going to you loot as much as you can. You wouldn't can care. You wouldn't care. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't have any accountability for, you know, you'd be like, of course, I'll promise your union a hundred years of pensions yeah. <laughs> at double your pay scale. You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of Hans Hermann Hoppe's argument that, uh, you know, kings had a different sense of ownership because it was long term. You know, they wanted their son, the prince, to also inherit uh, a state that was still functioning. Whereas if you have no sense of yeah. ownership, it's just a short term one hit thing. You're just going to loot as much as you can. You know, I, I slipped into minarchy there for a minute. I should have called Ben, my my anarchy sponsor. <laughs> Your sponsor? Ben, I'm thinking of voting. Talk me out yes. of it. I'm going to relapse yes. and vote. <laughs> he's your your status anonymous sponsor yeah i'll i'll tell ben what happened and i mean he, he'll lend a very understanding shoulder for you to to lean on there yeah yes <laughs> someone just sent me their their i asked someone for their phone number and they sent it to me and then said increase the last digit by and then said some other number and i'm like okay is that to keep the central scrutiny you think that's gonna yeah. It's full central scrutinizer. It's low key encryption. It's 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 kindergarten encryption. Yeah, there's yeah. actually a, a, on the shield. There's a drug dealer they bust who's got like every number in his phone. Like he's added one to it. You know, so it's all like uh, you know four three four. That's not it. You know, that's that's Virginia. Oh, oh wait, you mean three two three? It's L A. Okay, we got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, if if. If the NSA recruits from uh, the TSA's best and brightest, then maybe it will fool them. Yeah. Did you know the TSA <laughs> had checkpoints and bag searches at a Romney campaign event? <laughs> they had people in TSA outfits wow. and you wow. had to go by this table and be searched TSA style to get into uh. cheer for Romney. I'll bet you if you had wow. a Fiends button or a Ron Paul button, they wouldn't let you in. Yeah, that's completely ridiculous. It reminds me of something uh, they would have called it a weapon. Said. They would have said it's a weapon because it has a pin on the back of it. <laughs> has a pin on it. Yeah, yeah. It's a weapon of mass instruction. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what was I going to say? I forgot. Okay. Anyway, eloquent. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. statists think people should be in jail for being happy. That's the name of this episode. Lou came up with it, and uh, we mentioned that, but it's worth exploring. I mean, a lot of it, what what that came up from was I was searching Nick Cassavetes and libertarian because I wanted to see if he identified as a libertarian and he doesn't. But that movie, My Sister's Keeper, has such a libertarian, you know, like if there was libertarian logic classes, the story in that would be, you know, what what would the what would you do in lib pair in this? You know, and of course, you'd let the 11 year old girl sue her parents for medical emancipation to stop being a, you know, donor body for her sister. Um <gasps> Well, say here's what confused me about the premise, and maybe you can enlighten me. Uh, so she wanted to not be forced to go through the medical procedures her parents were doing to her, but she still wanted to live with her parents and yes. be a part of the family. Yes, because emancipation. No 11 year old is going to get emancipated from non abusive parents. You know, right? And be on their I, own. I feel like the best thing in that situation though would be for maybe her to to go to another family because if the state or some third party but she liked the, some rule. she liked the family and she got along with the family and she loved her sister and wanted to be around her there's a twist at the end i'm not going to give away a spoiler that makes it different but the libertarian noodle scratcher is just the basic lawsuit and alec baldwin plays the lawyer and uh joan kuzak plays the judge it's a really cool casting and okay. uh okay. yeah but um I kind of feel like, though, and I guess I didn't watch it, so I don't know how the family treated her, but um, that seems kind of like a cold thing. Like, were they just using her as an no, organ I mean, farm? Well, that's why they had her. I mean, they went to a geneticist and picked the best sperm to produce the child to be an organ but farm. But did they end up loving her as a daughter, or yes. did they still yes. treat her no, as an organ No, they farm? loved her as a daughter. Yeah, but they wanted her to give a kidney, and she was like, no. I mean, that's going to affect my life for the rest of my life. I can't drink. I can't do sports. I can't do, you know, I have to be careful all the time. No. Worms. So we're going to go sell some stuff and then come back for our wonderful final segment. 
Last chance for Fiend's buttons. Buy them. Three days, they go away. Yeah. I What's got up, a Lou? nice little story of horizontal liberation. Ah, oh, sounds like it's going to be awesome. We love those kind of stories. Uh, save it for yeah. when we're on live, though. We want our we don't want our live audience to hear that too. Right. Um, so how's life would been you treating call, you, Lou? Would, uh, pretty good, pretty good. I went to the campaign for liberty uh, hog and lamb roast yesterday. It was an open carry <laughs> event. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. It was everybody carrying, or were there a few unbelievers? Uh, most of the people were carrying. I'd okay. say at least well, half. What were, what were you sporting? <laughs> I, I can imagine uh, a libertarian Joan Rivers being like, ah, oh, what is he carrying? What, what were you carrying? I had the Glock 17 9 millimeter. Okay, okay. nice. Accessorized with a, with a double magazine ammo pouch. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. How many, uh, how many rounds is that? Is that 16 plus 1, 15 plus 1? 17 plus 1. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Pl and then... Man. And, the, and then the top hat, or the overcoat, we could say, was I, I had the AR on the on the combat fling. Oh, you did? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Anybody I, else uh, I open carry a rifle? No, I was the only one. Ah. It, it, kudos. The, the, event was, the event was held at a, at a local bar, and uh, he's like, well, yeah, if you want to be in the fenced-in area or out in the parking lot, no problem. You know, just probably shouldn't bring it inside. Don't fence huh. me in. Really? He didn't want you to take it in. What are we talking about? Um, an I awesome go, story I of... carrying my AR. Where'd you take it? Uh, to the Campaign for Liberty hog and lamb roast yesterday. Oh, my God. Hog and lamb roast. <laughs> is that really yeah, what it's I, called, I, they, or is that tongue-in-cheek? Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually got a couple funny looks when I had the AR strapped on. I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, you, you had to kill but, the lamb before they roasted it, right? It was already in the, the, in the barbecue when I got there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're coming back in a minute here. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I, I noticed that the blog has been getting picked up by a few different websites. I noticed that too, man. Uh, the blog was the greatest idea ever, and I really loved your contributions in it. I uh, hope they keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really like Lou's, Lou's articles we have and a, his uh, little quips there. Are we on? We have a pretty amazing new blogger being added. Hey, it's the Fiends, and we got Lou on the line. What's up, Lou? Uh, same old stuff. Lou's one of the bloggers on the Fiends blog, and he's he's like the ninth Fiend or the seventh Fiend or something. I don't keep track after third, but uh, he's an important part of the Fiends. And uh, we have a really cool get with uh, with the Fiends blog. We are adding another blogger next week, and it is... Da, 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 can, you guess, can you guess who it is? Ben Stone? It's David Crowley, the director of Grey State Movie. is going to be a oh, regular, regular blogger. Yep. Wow, that is a get. Yeah, Outstanding. Good, I can get him. anybody, man. I can. I mean, you know, not anything against anyone I get. It's not saying they're gettable or I got them or did anything to them. But, <laughs> not you know, saying they're easy. I mean, weren't we saying on the cast like two weeks ago, like, yeah, Adam Curry, the podfather, has a new streaming network. We should get on it. And we got on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, Lou, Lou called in to tell us uh, a fascinating story about horizontal enforcement, and I told him we love those stories because those are the kind of stories we want to hear. Um, go ahead and go for it, Lou. Well, it, 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 it's a double dose of liberty because not only is it horizontal liberation, <laughs> but ah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Horizontal liberation is also stymieing the statist. <laughs> I, I guess uh, in the uh, city of Detroit, there's a ballot measure to where uh, for pot to become legal. Uh, I called into a radio station, and they had a couple of people. One person was supporting the legalization. The other was against it. Uh, the one that was against it is a substance abuse counselor. Who, and he's black. Ah. Now, his race will come in. It'll be well, he, and, and he's a substance abuse counselor, so he has a monopoly of state recommendations to him because drugs are illegal. Well, he makes money yeah. off of it, right? He makes and, his living on the fact that it's illegal. And basically, he thinks people should be in jail for being happy, and then he'll rescue them from jail for a price. Mm. Right, right. So anyway, I decided that I would call into the radio show and voice my little uh, liberating comments and, and just point out the foolishness of, of his uh, ideas. 
And I informed him that I worked with homeless people, many of which have had substance abuse problems, and not a single one of his drug laws have, has prevented that. What do you say, and how and that, does his race play into it? Well, I'll, I'll get to that one. I also informed him that other people are not his property. Nobody has the right to tell somebody else what to do, no matter how many elections you have, mm-hmm. no matter what title you give, no matter how much no matter how much magic fairy dust you sprinkle on a human being, <laughs> he's still a human being. And, and, of, and, of, and of course, he had uh, he had spouted off with the status mantra of "It's the law," uh. to which I remind. <laughs> To which I reminded him at one time, so was segregation. Ah, got it. Did you know he was black from his voice, or did you see a picture of him? Yeah. Uh, I, I could tell from his voice, assume, and then assume, I, yeah. just, just, just the different things that he was saying. Uh, How did he respond you know, to that, though? Did, did he get it when you said, at one time, so was segregation? Did, he, did it click, or, or where, where did he go after that? Well, I could see him flinching through the radio, <laughs> right. yeah, and, and I mean, then of course, and, th- and then of course, somebody hit the refresh button. And he says, "Well, people have to be regulated, blah blah, statism, blah 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 blah." Uh, he All just went back to his stuff. old boilerplate and didn't really have a a direct rebuttal of what you, you know. Said. This segregation thing is a really weird um, quandary for a lot of statists. When you say something like that, like you know, horrible things used to be the law. Uh, they must have this concept of like, well, yeah, but in about 1968, everything became perfect, you know, and we need to enforce everything since then and then work on getting rid of the Second Amendment. Well, here, here's something else for you. You got all these immigration status. They're bitching. There's a process. Yeah, it takes several years, but it's the law. Well, so is Obamacare, and that's going to require a lot of paperwork, and that's going to take several years. Lap it up. Yeah, and... uh yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have any patient patience for legal positivism anymore. I mean, just because something's the law doesn't mean it's right. And people do like to pick and choose. You're right. The same people that say it's the law about one thing will go and complain about the other thing. And then they'll throw around that old thing. Well, if you don't agree with something, you should work within the system to fix it. Yeah, well, and my answer, the to system's that rigged. Is, my answer to that is the Ron Paul campaign is proof that won't work. The way, The dirty dealings that they did to keep Ron Paul mm-hmm. from getting on the ballot just prove to me f you to anybody who says well if you want don't like the law just work hard to change it yeah well the system is not people, fair and it's not moral so doing working within the system you're not going to get any good to come out of it i'd say more people put in more intense man hours trying to get ron paul elected than probably anything that's ever happened in america except ending segregation and that would have ended yeah. on its own anyway but ron paul you know that was just proof to me that, that those people need to be virtually slapped. Reach through the yeah, radio it, and slap him. Well, That's there, there were a lot of activist types at, at that hog roast yesterday that... Uh, hog roast. Um, Are these the, had, conf- had the confiscated hogs being ho- roasted? <laughs> uh, no, I think they were all purchased from the store. By the state. Okay. But there were, there were a lot of people talking about activism, getting involved, working within the system. And one of the guys there who's one of the chairman of uh, Campaign for Liberty was saying that he went out to this training thing out in Virginia and roughly about 95% of the uh, activists that are really gung ho and, and making a difference wind up selling out. They get offered a position, you know, Hey, we, we need a coordinator. We need somebody to, yeah. you know, bring up. They the pull a Jesse Benton that, basically. And, uh, essentially. I would say yeah. you are very gung ho literally. Cause you brought a gung, a gun, a gun, ho, gung ho. Yeah. A couple of them. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I know I haven't been doing too much on the blog. I've been busy as hell this past. That's week, okay. That's why we have redundancy. I mean, not that everyone's the same, but we have like twelve good people. So, you know, if one of them does something uh, once a week and one does something twice a week, that's a lot of blog posts. Yeah, I've started the I've started the project uh, of you know Libpair, and I'm I'm using the working title of Free New World, but that's subject to change. I like it. I really think you should and, have that scene in there that you thought of of the uh, the in the future of the the child saying to the mother, "Mommy, what's gun control? Or what's a gun permit? Oh yeah, what's a permit? I'm I'm, I'm actually going to make a, a series like a like a mini novel or a, or a fiend soap opera, and yeah. it's going to be it's going to be three sections. It's going to be the decline, the collapse, 
and then rising from the ashes. Am I going to be the uh, nice. the, the libertarian um, overlord of the world? I want to be that. You're going to have. You're going to be in charge of. You're going to be the commandant of the libertarian re-education camps, and you will be the chief of beating the non-aggression principle in the people. That is, that is not going to help my station in life a lot if you really do that. But it's pretty damn funny. I like the idea uh, of an it, opera, it, though. I mean, that'd be fun. That'd be fun to produce. It's, it's, got, it's going to be a combination of uh, of gray state and office space. I like that. <laughs> That's a good pitch, man. It is, yeah. Gray, yeah. Space, gray state meets office space in a dark alley, and they fight. Right. Right. Uh, so there's, there's going to be some comedy in there, but I am going to I am going to scare the living shit out of some people. Oh my! Or, or at least creep them out. What do you think about this? Uh, have you heard about this thing? The new iPhone 5 is like so popular that in New York City they're getting stolen all the time. So the police are hanging out in front of the iTunes store, i, I store, the i store, the Apple store, the Apple store, and offering to register people's iPhones preemptively <laughs> in case they're stolen. And they say like the next generation in identity protection, which is also the motto BS. of the New Jersey thing, where they're saying you can't smile in a government ID. Which is to make it easier to use optical, you know, face recognition software with it. But DJ just said, you know, no more smiles in New Jersey. Right, <laughs> right. I feel like I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to feel good about or, or comfortable letting the thieves try to keep my Apple iPhone from getting stolen. I right? know. I mean, and and like saying the next generation in identity protection for the the you know you can't smile in the IDs. Like that's not identity protection. That's being identifiable. It's control. To them. Yeah. Protection, yeah. You know, that's the next generation in controlling you and having a, you under our thumb. Yeah. I mean, and do you really want to like take your new iPhone out of the box before you get to unbox it at home in the privacy of your masturbatory right. bedroom and like <laughs> let, let the cops it, open your iPhone for you and like no, probably no. plug it into some device that'll, you know, copy the serial number or whatever. Well, I, I I was in New Jersey for a few months I'm several sorry. years ago, and I didn't I didn't smile the whole time, so that's not a real <laughs> big deal. Uh, They're just making and, it official. And if the, if the cops want to hang out at the at the i store, you know, well, I, I guess that means that people will be running rampant with their sixteen point nine fluid ounces of soda and their salt <laughs> shakers and everything else. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's so many cop cops in New York. Corner. Yeah. They yeah. they want to though. Think about the real crimes that'll, that that the cops won't be able to do anything about while that's happening. If you believe the police can do anything about it, and thanks for calling in, Lou. All right, take care. Worms. Appreciate it, Lou. Thanks. It's been another fine fiends day, Nima. Thank you. Yeah, it sure has. We got bumper music playing us out. Is yeah. it time to wrap it up, B? Wrap it up, B. Yeah, let's wrap it up. See if I can 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 see if then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.